Hi, I'm Gary White for Channel 6 Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Jennifer Osborne, who is a health educator with the Lincoln Trail District Health Department. And you work in all three counties, I think, that we serve, right? Well, uh, actually, I do some work in all three. Marion, <laughs> Marion and Washington are my primary, but I do some work in Nelson as well. Okay. okay, and we're going to talk about some different programs in the different counties that you serve. But first, we want to start off because uh, last week we got a press release from the Lincoln Trail District Health Department about an outbreak that they're calling it of hepatitis A in Marion County. And there's actually going to be a vaccination program coming up on November 2nd. Let's first of all, tell us about hepatitis A and this outbreak that has been occurring here in Marion County. Okay. Um, well, and Marion County is the third, I'm sorry, the fourth of our counties in Lincoln Trail District um, in our region that has been considered an, an outbreak status. Um, Hardin County was the first one that went into outbreak status, um, and then also Nelson and Meade. But um, Marion County was put into outbreak status last week, which basically means there has been so many cases within a certain period of time, and, and now... Um, the state is able to provide some more vaccination, some more vaccine in order to get people vaccinated. Um, but it is recommended that everybody um, in Marion County receive a Hep A vaccination. And as a a way to help with that, we are going to be hosting a vaccination clinic here at the Marion County Health Department on November the second, which is this coming Friday from three to six. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a cost for those vaccinations? No, that vaccination clinic is free. Um, we do prefer that people uh, who show for the vaccination clinic, um, whether they are underinsured or uninsured, um, that's our primary target population, but um, it is open to the public. Okay. And if you do have insurance, you can go to your doctor and possibly your physician and get right. a vaccination right. as well. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Check with your health care provider um, and see what your insurance is going to be covering as well. Okay. Now tell us a little about hepatitis A. Who's who's at risk or where's the concern come from that? Well, hepatitis A uh, falls into that category of uh, viruses that do um, affect the liver. You know, there's there are different kinds of hepatitis A, B, and C, um, which are the, the primary types here uh, in the United States. But hepatitis A, the way that that one is transmitted is primarily um, it is a fecal oral transmission. So it's when somebody is how inadvertently it may be and in whatever small amounts it may be um, where they are actually ingesting fecal matter. So a lot of times you do see um, hepatitis A transmitted whenever you have people that are working um, in food settings. Um, I will add that none of the cases that have occurred in um, in Marion County have had, there are none that have been restaurant workers. So all those that have been investigated are not uh, restaurant workers. Um, but those people that are, are at risk are those that, um, that may have, that may be homeless. Um, injection drug users uh, tend to be at a greater risk as well. Um, and then just, you know, folks that have a, um, a weakened immune system mm -hmm. are at risk. And for the vaccine, mm -hmm. or if you've had hepatitis A, either way, you're immune from further... Uh, infection is that correct? Right, um, and the hep the hepatitis A vaccine is a series of two shots that is given within a six month period. Um, I think that the immunization rate typically uh, people are seeing about ninety percent immunization with the first. Uh, dose. So a lot of people say, well, what if I don't go back and get that second dose? You are about 90% immunized with that, with that first dose. Okay. So if they were to come on Friday, they'd get the first mm -hmm. dose right. and then they'd have to come back within a certain period. Within, within six months to get okay. that second. Mm -hmm. Okay. And both of those are free mm -hmm. with us? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we were saying with the outbreak, there had been about 16 reported cases in Marion County so far? There are 16 um, cases that have been investigated here in Marion County. Um, I will say that we have vaccinated over 500 individuals in Marion County uh, with that Hep A vaccine. Um, we've done some hep, um, some vaccination at our detention center providing vaccination down there uh, because that is a um, an at-risk population. Um, but we still have vaccine available for the public as well. Okay. And again, that'll be on November the 2nd from 3 to 6 at the Marion County Health Department. And it is a free vaccine for individuals with the, uh, for the hepatitis A vaccination. Right. right, right. Now, also, we want to talk about 
uh, the needle exchange program in another one of our county, Nelson County, mm-hmm. that we were talking about at a recent meeting, you were mentioning that that program, you had some figures, and we want to kind of give an update. First of all, that program's been going on now for about... It's over a year now. We okay. started on uh, July 1 okay. um, of 2017, so we have hit that one-year anniversary mark. Um, and. You know, we do like to give an update on how things have been going. Um, We recently, our director, Sarah Jo Best, recently gave an update to Nelson County Fiscal Court Mm -hmm. and provided them with some of the numbers of the number of clients um, within that first year. And uh, we've had 96 um, individuals who have taken advantage of the syringe exchange during that first year. We Obviously, we hope to see those numbers uh, continue to go up. but we feel like that's a pretty good success for our first year. Absolutely. And again, tell us a little about the Needle Exchange Program, how it works, and what you're looking to accomplish with that. Right. Um, a syringe exchange program is is part of um, what we call harm reduction. Um, basically, what syringe exchange does is helps to uh, prevent the spread of disease uh, whenever we have people that are um, using needles to inject drugs Um, and primarily the diseases that we want to prevent are hepatitis C as well as HIV. Um, So being able to provide them with clean syringes is one way to to help reduce those um, those diseases. Um, There's always some some other good side effects that come from the syringe exchange program too and that is we're able to help people um, anybody that is you know ready to seek treatment. We we do have referral services for that. Um, we also um, are able to refer them to other type of clinical services that they may need to. So there, there are some other good side effects that come along from it. And it is an anonymous program, correct? It is. It is completely anonymous. Uh, when individuals sh- uh, show up for the exchange, um, they are given basically a, an identifier, a code. Uh, we don't even, a- we don't have no names um, and that is how they are identified is by using that code and um, it's completely anonymous and and open to anyone and as we said it's been going on for a little over a year now the goal is eventually to get to as the needles are given out that they're all returned Uh, but that's a process that takes some time correct it is a process um, and there's still a lot of debate about whether uh, that one-to-one exchange is best practice Um, Regardless of whether the syringes come back, we, we still want to provide clean uh, syringes for folks to use. Um, but we we do um, like to, to have some brought back. Um, obviously, within that first year, it's not going to be a one-to-one. Um, we have distributed a little over 14,000 syringes, and we have re- um, had a, a little over 5,000 returned. Um, so it's obviously not one-to-one, but there are a lot of reasons why they do not come back because you know some of those folks may only come to the exchange one time and they never return or maybe they're using other uh, syringe exchange locations um, and turning those needles in in, in other uh, locations but but there's lots of different reasons why they make they may not make it back into the exchange but with the, even with that over a third of the needles are no longer out there then correct correct um, and You know, I hear people say a lot of times, well, you're just putting more syringes out into the community. And we do a lot of education about how to dispose of those those syringes, even if they don't come back to uh, the exchange program and bring those with. We talk to them quite frequently about how they need to be disposing of them if they're not going to bring them back in for disposal. So for the needle exchange program, it, that is conducted at the Nelson County Health Department, right? Correct. Um, it is at the Nelson County Health Center, um, and the hours of operation are, um, excuse me, eight to noon and one to four. Uh, there's that twelve to one time frame where where they're not um, working, but um, Monday through Friday, and all anybody has to do is walk in and say they're there for the exchange and. Um, it, like you said, it is completely anonymous and confidential, um, so it's it's open to anybody. And it's not just for Nelson County residents either. Um, we see, we do see uh, folks from other uh, counties coming in uh, using the exchange. 
Right. So you do get the information on where they're from, where they're coming, but not their names or anything. Right. So you know that some people from other counties are going. So Marion County or Washington County, Nelson County, wherever could be going to that. Exchange. Exactly. We do ask for a zip code, but again, that's self-reported. So I think uh, there have been some zip codes that are non-existent and that have showed up in reports, but um, it is self-reported, and that is the only um, really information about residents that we receive from them. Okay. And again, that's open to everybody for that needle exchange program at the Nelson County Health Center on South 3rd Street. Correct. Correct. All right. And also, we want to just give an update as well. I know another program that you're working on is the smoke-free legislation that you're trying to get passed, particularly here in Marion County, right? Right. Um, we have formed um, a, a coalition of folks. Um, we like to call ourselves a Coalition for Smoke-Free Marion County. Um, and, and sometimes that's a little misleading because people think, oh, smoke-free means that no one is going to be allowed to smoke. And that is obviously not the, the purpose of the um, program. It's basically we want all indoor public places to be smoke-free. Uh, so we are going to be pushing for um, a smoke-free ordinance in Marion County. We We've, at this point, we're trying to get out and do a lot of education about what that policy would be like and mm -hmm. how it would affect people, as well as what are the benefits of it um, as as it relates to secondhand smoke. So we're we're out there trying to do some education first, and then and then we're going to talk to those policymakers pretty soon and see what we can get going. I know, for instance, in Bardstown, they have the city has a smoke-free policy. Correct. Uh, Lebanon does not, is that correct? Lebanon does not. Um, there is not any jurisdiction within Marion County that has smoke-free policy. Um, like you said, Bargetown has smoke-free policy, but Nelson County does not have smoke-free right. policy. I think that is something that they're looking at uh, pushing forward with as well. Um, Campbellsville has a smoke-free policy, but Taylor County does not. Um, but a lot of our um, surrounding counties are, are pushing for it. So, you know, we want to get ahead of the boat and, and try to do something that's really good for the health of our community. Right. And it's just for smoking in public places primarily. Correct. You know, so any any public place uh, indoors, you know, mm -hmm. not even outdoors. We're not we're not touching that at this point. Um, but indoor public places. So, you know, restaurants, bars, any any business setting uh, where people would be going in, uh, we would like for those to be uh, smoke free. And honestly, there are not a lot of businesses left in Marion County that do allow smoking indoors. So it's, I don't think it's going to be extremely, um, it's not going to be really difficult for us to um, make those kinds of changes, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> now, what do, what's the response when people are saying, for instance, in a restaurant, they have a smoking area and a non-smoking area. Why isn't that sufficient? Well, number one, um, Walls do not matter. Um, whenever you're looking at a, a facility, for instance, such as a restaurant that has a smoking or a non-smoking section, that that smoke is still circulating through the ventilation systems. Um, and I think if you ask most people that you know would maybe be sitting in the non-smoking section, they still smell it. Um, and you know, there's even there's a lot of talk about secondhand smoke, but there's even thirdhand smoke where it starts to get in people's clothing, it gets in the paint in the walls, um, and, and there's some studies behind thirdhand smoke and the effect that that has on people too. But um, a non-smoking section really doesn't make much difference. And especially if people who have to go to the non-smoking section have to walk through the smoking section to get it, which sometimes is, is the case. So. Well, again, I've been talking with Jennifer Osborne, who's with the uh, Lincoln Trail District Health Department, health educator for Marion and Washington, working in Nelson for some issues as well, uh, with some updates on issues that are going on in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Right. It's been Gary White for Channel 6 Central Kentucky Television.